Welcome to The Six Shifts with Jan Birkins and Carrie Yates, co-authors of Shifting the Balance, Six Ways to Bring the Science of Reading into the Balanced Literacy Classroom, published by Stenhouse. In this podcast based on their new book, Jan and Carrie, with Stenhouse's Dan Tobin, address misconceptions and misunderstandings that have discouraged educators from incorporating the science of reading into the balanced literacy classroom. In this first episode, Jan, Carrie, and Dan discuss the background and origin of Shifting the Balance, their hopes for readers, and their experience of rethinking their teaching practice. Congratulations, Jan and Carrie, on the new book. Uh, From the time that we announced it back in December, I think, the book has generated a lot of anticipation and enthusiasm. Uh, Can you give us some background on how the book came about, where the idea came from? Well, Dan, in the fall of 2019, we both um, discovered we were really simultaneously grappling with the same quandary. We were we were at this place where it seemed like no matter where we turned, whether Twitter or conference events or consulting work we were doing, we were just bumping into this this balanced literacy science of reading dichotomy. And the literacy coaches and teachers and administrators and district leaders who were hiring us as consultants were asking us what to do. And we didn't know. We really didn't know how to respond. They were dismayed and we were frustrated. And and pretty soon in, I really knew that I wanted to roll up my sleeves and try to figure out what to do, you know, how to help them. But I I also knew it wasn't a project I wanted to enter into alone. <laughs> it's kind of a scary project. Um, it certainly wasn't a project for the faint of heart. So who in the world would want to step into something that could be perceived as a hornet's nest with me, you know? So <laughs> so I approached Carrie Yates. <laughs> That's your yeah. Cue, Carrie. yeah, that's my cue. And you know what? Um, Jan and I have been, we are dear, dear friends. Um, and we share this really deep passion for early literacy. But honestly, when Jan started to talk about that, this was something she was interested in. And, and, you know, might I like to consider the possibility of pursuing this project with her? Honestly, I just said, no, like no way. I think the language I used was, I'm a hard no on this, Jan. No. (laughs) Um, For a whole bunch of, you know, what I realized were really fear-based reasons. And I'm thinking, why would we want to purposefully plant ourselves smack in the middle of controversy and debate? Um, And we're not scientists or researchers, but doggone it. She kind of planted that seed and... Because I, just like her, was sincerely curious um, and really grappling, like she said, all the time with this disconnect, you know, like what might what might we be missing? My hard no really started to soften. And it eventually came around to being a resounding yes. You know, yes, let's let's do this. Let's um, let's hold hands and go together and try to dig into this work for ourselves and for others like us. So that's that's how it got sort of a not easy start, but a start. <laughs> Tell us uh, each of you a bit about uh, your background or what experience did you bring to the project? You said you're you're not researchers. Uh, what was your perspective and and training to get to this point? Dan, we're we're more practitioners than researchers. And um, I was an elementary classroom teacher for eight years. I was a literacy coach for eight years. I've also worked at a state regional service agency as a ELA consultant and as a district literacy leader. And but now I guess for 12 years or so, I've been a full-time writer and literacy consultant. And so So I'm not uh, a researcher by trade. I did do um, quantitative research for my dissertation and meta-analysis. So there is a part of me that enjoys digging into research, and that part had some appeal to me. But just in general, we're not technically researchers. (laughs) And I, too, I I have experience as a classroom teacher. I worked as an early childhood special ed teacher, um, reading recovery 
And uh, most recently, I've spent time in um, leadership roles as an elementary principal and a district administrator. But I think that for me, the common thread in all of those roles has just been my driving passion for early literacy. That's kind of my, my background in a nutshell. And Dan, what I really appreciate about Carrie is that she's constantly, I don't appreciate it in the moment, but after the fact, I appreciate it. She's constantly raising the bar on our work. I think, oh, we're finished with this chapter or we're finished with this project. And she is relentless about reflecting and she comes back and she says, you know, we need to look at this again through this lens. And then once I get over being <laughs> being a little frustrated at going back to the drawing board, we take another pass and we do actually make it better. And and she's the quintessential learner. I mean, she recreationally watches videos on teaching comprehension or teaching phonics. And so it'll be a Saturday and she'll be like, ah, you know, I just watched the best video about how to teach open and closed syllables. And I'll be like, really? That's what you're doing for fun this Saturday? <laughs> Jan has this really special way of um, seeing a whole big picture and then seeing how all the pieces fit together. She is not only one of the most brilliant and creative people I know, but she's also just kind of fierce and unafraid to follow her instincts and take risks. And I really believe that it's a combination of Jan's insight and her courageous commitment to not shy away from a challenge, no matter how staggering it might seem, <laughs> that that got us here today with this beautiful book we're so proud of in our hands. And so um, I'll be forever grateful that she um, planted that seed and pushed me on my hard no. Oh, oh shucks, sister. <laughs> I'm going to pull that out when you're cross at me. So you've both uh, worn a lot of different hats in your career in education uh, and played different roles. Uh, who is this book really for? Is it for all kinds of educators, teachers, administrators? Uh, what's the well, primary focus? We think of the primary audience as balanced literacy teachers, although, you know, it's it's has some appeal, it seems, to both quote unquote groups. It's really for educators who are tired of trying to sort out the truth from the re rhetoric on either side, if you will, of the conversation. It's for educators who have learned maybe some science, but don't quite know how to translate it into balanced literacy practices. The truth is, Dan, you don't have to choose or teachers don't have to choose between intentional instruction in the print system and meaningful, engaging reading instruction. There are many misunderstandings and confusions that we believe every elementary educator will benefit from getting cleared up. So it's a broad audience, we hope. And I think it's also for anyone who wants to support thinking about what the current conversation means for their specific school or district. So sure. if you're a building or district leader and you want to support a large scale shift, this book we think can really be a lever for opening hearts and minds. This book is intentionally written in such a way that it really can itself become sort of a roadmap for any teacher, school or district leader in assessing where are you right now and what next steps might you consider as you do the hard work, ongoing work of aligning research and practice? And Dan, we should mention that Carrie's in, in Minnesota and I'm in Athens, Georgia. And so we have a lot of fun with words like lever and lever and uh, <laughs> pajama and pajama. And um, all those uh, regional dialectical differences in the way we pronounce words. So I managed to straighten her out most of the time. Yeah. Jan's editing you again there, Carrie. You know? <laughs> I think so. I think so. <laughs> I know from talking to you both that this writing this book was an emotional experience for you. Uh, it takes courage to rethink practices and you hold dear, and especially to do it publicly. Um, I think that's <laughs> why. You do that? <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's part of the power of the book. Uh, 
that you uh, take us on a journey from Carrie's hard no to her her yes. Uh, you went through a lot. Uh, can you talk about that a bit? It's true. This wasn't purely academic or technical work, you know, although it certainly was that, but it was also very emotionally taxing, you know, not to mention that it was written during a global pandemic. So, but, you know, it called on us to reevaluate long held beliefs and practices. And as humans, our brains just aren't wired to do that. We're not wired to spot our own misunderstandings and biases were wired to do just the opposite. So it, there was some vulnerability here. Yeah. And I think we recognize that right from the beginning. I mean, it's certainly part of my hard no. Um, and so, you know, one of the things we did to sort of, I guess, in a way, take care of ourselves um, is we actually wrote up out some reminders to ourselves that we would use along the way when we needed to kind of help each other work through that vulnerability, we knew that we were likely to experience kind of again and again. And and those reminders have been really helpful to us. And so we actually decided to share them in the book. And if you would um, allow us, we're thinking we might actually like to share them right now, uh, just to give people a flavor for how we how we supported ourselves. And these come from page seven of the book. Are you okay with Can that? Can we read them to you, Dan? Go for it. Okay. okay. So we commit to being kind to ourselves, making peace with the unavoidable reality that there are things we have missed, misunderstood, and misinterpreted. We commit to honestly appraising our current practices with an open heart and an open mind. We commit to recognizing and reflecting on our own triggers and biases. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that one makes me, there were some triggers. There really were. All right. We commit to actively working to lower our defenses so we can raise our awareness. And we commit to reconsidering, reprioritizing, or simply letting go of less helpful practices to make space for some that are more effective. And finally, we commit to taking action rather than giving in to the paralysis of self-doubt or overwhelm. So there it is. Those are kind of the promises we make for ourselves to, to move through this work. I feel like I, I should be sworn into the club and make some commitments <laughs> myself. That's, uh, it's kind of a kumbaya moment, isn't it, Dan? <laughs> it is. It is. We, we realized as we were, you know, we were working through this, and, and these are sort of, they apply to any sort of a polarized conversation. And so we found them useful in other ways in our lives as well. <laughs> Well, we have a lot of polarized conversations going on around we do. us. We do. We do. And speaking of that, you use the term bridge a lot in, in the book. Um, what does that metaphor of a, a bridge mean in shifting the balance? What is it you're, you're bridging? Well, Dan, we want um, the book to serve as a bridge. And really between the two groups that see themselves as separate right now, because we saw a lot of commonality, a lot of places where we are aligned already in ideas. And so we want to help people move from polarization to practicality. We're not, we're not interested in any, any reading wars or debates. We're not here. We're not here either to talk anyone into anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I think really what we're trying to do is just offer an invitation to open-heartedly embrace the opportunity. We want to help shift from misunderstand, misunderstanding to movement, from confusion to clarity, and ultimately move from argument to action. Like, what can we do for kids here? Well, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, I look forward to continuing the conversation as we talk about each of the six shifts. Thanks, Dan. We really appreciate you. Yeah, thank you sincerely. We just, we're so grateful for this opportunity, Dan. Shifting the Balance, Six Ways to Bring the Science of Reading into the Balanced Literacy Classroom by Jan Birkins and Carrie Yates is available from Stenhouse Publishers. 
Follow Jan Birkins online at Dr. Jan Birkins and www.drjanberkins.com. Follow Carrie Yates at Carrie underscore Yates. And be sure to check out www.thesixshifts.com. We hope you enjoyed listening to The Six Shifts with Jan Birkins and Carrie Yates. Future episodes will look more closely at each shift. We'd love to hear your feedback. Get in touch with us at marketing at stenhouse.com. And please share this with your colleagues who you think would enjoy it too. Thanks for listening.